Hello YouTube! Today I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu Linux on an Apple iMac A1311. Doing this will help breathe new life into an outdated Mac OS system. So first of all, you'll need to create a bootable Linux USB drive. There's a part of this video that shows a tutorial on how to upgrade your hard drive to a larger drive or an SSD if you need the information. And finally, I will demonstrate how to actually install Linux and show one more tip at the end for making sure this works smoothly. First of all, we're going to need the application Rufus in order to create a bootable USB drive. This is a very handy tool, pretty easy to use. All you gotta do is make sure you go to this website here. And then from here, you're going to want to scroll down until you see the download. I'd recommend downloading the latest version as it might change from when I made this video here. The next thing you'll need is the ISO file itself, which you can get directly from ubuntu.com. Very handy. And then once you get to this page, there will be a download section. And you're going to want to get the latest version of this as well. This might take a long time, depending on your internet speed or the speed of your computer in general. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and open up Rufus. Now you're going to need to plug in a USB drive that you want to use for this. Make sure you don't have any data on it that you need. It should be all ready to go because everything on that drive is going to get wiped when you do this. So make sure you select with that button there and choose Ubuntu. From there, you can name the volume whatever you'd like. It doesn't really matter um, on anything else, so just go ahead and hit the start button. And then from there, it will take some time. Also, I would just recommend doing the ISO image mode. And it will warn you again that all data on this drive will be deleted, so take that seriously. So once that is done, you will be able to see that it has changed your drive. It has all these different files. It's ready to be booted to. So you can eject this from your current computer and get ready to put it in the iMac and get started on the installation. If you don't need to swap out or look at your hard drive during this time, feel free to skip this next portion. All right. To check or replace your hard drive, you will need a suction cup of some sort and or something that would be able to pry this piece off of the computer. Make sure that's firmly down here. I'm going to need to put the camera down for a moment. So it's just a little bit of pressure. You're able to pull this off of here. You won't have the same issue as you will likely have the screws in on this display. So I have to pull the magnets back in order to get the screen off of that. Okay, once you take this front screen off, you will have eight screws to get rid of before you can access that back panel. So one is here, another is here, one right below that. Apologies for the camera there. Right there at the very bottom, there's another one. And on the right side, another one at the bottom, one right above it. And then another one right here and one right above that. And from there, it should be able to just come forward. Now the issue <laughs> is that when putting the screws back in, these little magnets might give you some trouble um, grabbing onto your screwdriver or the screw while you're trying to put it back in. Just keep at it and if you can try to block the magnet while you're putting it in, that helps. So it'll look more like that and then as you can see here, you open this up. There is the SSD I use to install Linux on it. I would honestly recommend using an SSD instead of an HDD as it's less likely to fail and a lot faster. And when you open this up, you got to be careful that, let's see if I can get some zoom in, that this piece right here 
the wire is plugged in. Make sure that's plugged in. As well as this LCD display. And then this little guy right down here. Because those can come, lo come loose when you're bending this screen too far forward. So, something to keep note of. Now when replacing the SSD or hard drive itself, you will need to unplug these two cables here, one to power the drive and one to read it. There's that one. And this one right here. So on the new drive, you're going to want to secure it in here somehow. I did with Velcro. Put the camera down real quick just to show. I've lined it up back with how it's supposed to be plugged in. Just pop it back. Pop that back in. Make sure both of them are secure. And that can close back up. Put all the screws back in if you can. There are some little hooks on the bottom here. So these pieces of metal you need to slide into. So continuing on with installing Linux on this machine, we're going to want to plug the USB drive we made earlier into the back of the system. You will also need a keyboard plugged in in order to actually boot to this drive. The key to this is the option key. You'll need to hold this when you boot your system in order to make it think about which one it actually wants to boot to, otherwise it'll go to the default and or just, depending on if you just replaced it with a new one, it should actually open with this screen anyway. But just in case you still have macOS on there and you don't want it anymore, you've backed up all your data, you're ready to go with this option key. So after some time, this popped up. We're going to want to click on the right one, as that's the symbol for the USB stick. Go ahead and click the little arrow beneath it and start the process. So looking closer here, there's a couple different options. I'd always recommend the top one unless you have a really old system with terrible specs and really can't run much else other than the low graphics, but Macs are usually really good about that. Here you can try Ubuntu if you want to, but the purpose of this video is to actually install it. So go ahead and click install. It's going to ask you for all of your preferences on this sort of thing. Go ahead and take the time to connect to the internet if you would like. For now, I'm just going to skip it. And once again, depending on the specs, I would recommend normal installation for all purposes. All right, since I already have Ubuntu installed on this disk because I already set this up before, it's going to ask me if I want to dual boot. However, I don't want to run Ubuntu and Ubuntu. I just want to make a fresh install. So I'm going to erase the disk and continue. This will delete all of the data on that drive, just so you know, so be careful of that. So go ahead and hit continue, choose your time zone. And this might take some time to install Before that, you need to make your username and password. I just put in some defaults. And the nice thing about this is it gives you some little tips and tricks about Ubuntu. All right, after it finishes doing all the installation, it'll ask you to just reboot your computer. So go ahead and go through with that. 
And then on the reboot, it will probably ask you, if you haven't done this already, to pull out the USB stick. Please remove installation medium. And then you press enter. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. When booting up your machine, if you're connected to the internet, you will likely get a pop-up, something like this, asking you to install an update. If not, you can type in, after clicking the Windows key on your keyboard or the bottom left, update, and bring this up. Put in your password and start updating. So, sorry about the camera, but I'm going to demonstrate how to install MBP fan, which is key in making sure your fans don't go out of control while running this operating system. So in case you haven't already, you have to be fully updated in order for this to work from my experience. So make sure you get this message that says you're up to date. And then you're going to need to open the terminal application which you can find there usually, or you can type it in the search bar here. All right. Now from here, you're going to type in the following command, sudo space apt dash git space install space mbp fan. It's going to ask you then for your uh, administrative password, which when you're typing it in, you will not be able to see what you're typing. So make sure you type in correctly. Um, it, if you don't, it'll just cue you to do it again. So it's not a big deal. From there, it will go ahead and install that to your system. And you should hear the fans get a lot quieter after that. If you enjoyed the video or have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching this video, and if you're interested in these iMacs, we actually have two on the sales floor right now that you can come take a look at. Thank you, and have a great rest of your day.